Great. My name is Devin. I'm an emergency doctor at Sick Kids Hospital, and I'm also a computer scientist in health AI. And it's such an honor to be here. So thank you, Google. Thank you, The Walrus, for the invite and putting this together. And thank you all for coming out to hear us talk. I want to start my talk off with a, a real life story. Um, when I was a junior doctor, I had a patient unfortunately die what I think is a preventable death, partially because they were just waiting too long. I remember getting called to the bedside, doing CPR, and literally feeling that kiddo slip away beneath my hands. It was devastating. It really lit a fire in me. I was angry about this. And I remember just thinking, like, what are we going to do about this as a health system? You're, you're such a junior um, person in your career, and it can feel very overwhelming because there's so many factors that contribute to this. But I discovered that if we could unlock the data that sits in our electronic health record systems, there might be opportunities to be able to prevent many cases like this from happening. So let's talk about a use case at SickKids, something that we're actively getting ready uh, to do a clinical trial and test on. What is this use case not? It's not generative AI. This isn't a use case with wide-reaching uh, scope where there's implications of an AI system having um, uncontrollable harms, potentially. A lot of incredible opportunity with generative AI, but that's not what this is. This is a really narrow use case, and I want to open it up with uh, a real story. So imagine you're a parent at home, your kiddo should be outside, playing in the sun, having a good time, but they're in their bed complaining of tummy pain. What do you do, right? A couple days go by, and that parent comes to the emergency department at SickKids. Really common story. They're having tummy pain. The spoiler alert here, unfortunately, this kiddo has appendicitis. They need to get to surgery. But what will happen in the emergency department? They'll wait two to four hours or so, maybe eight. If it's a really bad day, maybe longer than eight hours, right? And I can tell you the parent knows that this kid might have an appendicitis and that an ultrasound should be done. The triage nurse knows that this kid might have an appendicitis and that an ultrasound should be done. But you're still going to sit waiting for that test to be ordered. So we asked ourselves this question, could we use artificial intelligence, use that data that's available at triage, and actually predict that that patient may need the test? And if we could do that, why don't we just order the test while you're waiting the, the four to six hours, doing nothing, right? What if we could do that? And we actually demonstrated at SickKids with our research that we can do that and we can do it really, really well. Because it's not rocket science to tell that this kid has appendicitis. The kid's even concerned. They're Googling their symptoms and they're like, ah, appendicitis, <laughs> right? This happens all the time. And so I tell you, I don't need to be an AI genius to build a model to predict appendicitis. And we can do it really well. We're at this exciting phase where we are prospectively deploying this model in a silent trial. What does that mean? It means that we've validated the model. It's running live in the background, but we're just not acting on the results yet. Why? Because we're obsessed with safety. We want to really ensure that when this model is deployed, it's going to do so in a really safe, reliable, accurate way. But what else, do we, what else do we need to be obsessed about? Equity, right? What if you speak a different language, and when you come into the hospital, the quality of your triage note is a little bit shorter? Maybe you don't use all the right words that most of our other population uses. Is this AI model still going to predict really well for you? What if you're of a different ethnicity, a different age, different gender? We have to stand proud as a hospital at SickKids and be able to look to the public and say, here is an incredible innovation that's going to save lives, fast track care, address elements of our healthcare crisis, and it's going to work for everyone. And if there's an area where it's not necessarily going to work as well, we have to be transparent about that. Right? So we have to do these bias assessments, these equity assessments. But there's a big problem. I'll tell you right now, these models are working really well. I can't yet deploy them into practice, even though we desperately need them, because we don't have the ethnicity data in our healthcare systems in Canada to do the audit. I can't even ask the question, is this model racist, yes or no? I don't think the model's going to be racist, but you know what I mean. Is there a bias intrinsic in the data that's being captured by this model? I can't ask that question. So we're doing a clinical trial soon, hopefully, if we get the right funding, to then be able to collect that data to demonstrate to the public these tools are safe, they're equitable. But how do you actually get these models into people's hands? So this is where Hero AI comes from. So I'm also the co-founder and CEO of a health tech company in very close partnership with SickKids called Hero AI. I was building these incredibly powerful models from an academic perspective, but you know, don't tell the research institute, I don't really care about the publications. Um, that's one of my KPIs. <laughs> I want to get it to the bedside, right? Hopefully they're not watching. I want to get it to the bedside. 
And how do you do that? You need to create an application. You need to create web apps, mobile apps. I need to get an application into a patient's hands so that when you arrive to the hospital, you go through triage, you as a patient get an alert that empowers you to choose if you're going to make this next step in your care. Not waiting for a doctor, but giving you the autonomy as a patient, right? That's what we're focused on. And so really proud to say, Hero AI has created one of the world's most agile clinical automation platforms. We just launched today at Collision. We're deployed at SickKids Hospital. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's really great. Um, we're deployed at SickKids Hospital, and it really represents this ability to go from a really terrible case that happened to get technology into the hands of patients and to really democratize how we leverage AI. But there's a few other considerations. If you get that alert as a patient and, and you just hit consent, think of all the apps you sign up for and you're like, sure, consent, consent, consent. That's not really informed consent, right? How do we then actually display information to a family, to a kiddo, to their parent in a way that genuinely captures informed consent? in different languages, with the cultural nuance that's needed. I, as a human, when I go talk to a patient, I factor all these things in, in real time. I can tell that my patient's not getting what I'm saying, and then I say it in a different way, and I, I reiterate and I pivot on how I'm communicating, right? That's part of being a great doctor. How do we get AI-based technologies to interface with humans in a way that really is respectful for what we actually do as human providers? And if we can do that, I think that we can really unlock this technology. I think that as Canadians, we owe it to the AI community to take these Canadian values of a cultural mosaic and to ensure that we hold our standards of AI in this country to that bar so that we can translate technologies, transform care, and save lives together. Thank you so much for the time.